60 Minutes Overtime. This week on 60 Minutes, we travel to a war zone in northwest Syria, a part of Syria that's been fighting a civil war for a dozen years now. Tragically, it was also not far from the epicenter of the earthquakes that happened in February. We were there weeks after the earthquake occurred, and once we got into northwest Syria, you could see immediately the incredible devastation. Towns and cities that we were in, you would see one building standing, and the next uh, five or six story apartment building just rubble in the street. يعني باللحظة الأولى اللي اللي صار فيها الزلزال مثل يعني أنا كنت موجود في بغازي عنتاب وصار الزلزال أنا نزلت يعني أول شيء على الشارع كنت عم بحاول نساعد المدنيين اللي موجودين بالشارع لأنه هني ما كانوا عم بيعرفوا وين لازم يوقفوا بعدين أنا فتحت الإنترنت وصرت أحكي على غرفة الطوارئ اللي عنا أنه لازم يكون في تفقد Riyad Al Saleh is a remarkable individual. He was an electrical contractor in Syria. But when the Assad dictatorship and then later the Russians began devastating city after city, began aerial bombardment of apartment buildings, shelling of apartment buildings, he found himself wanting to rescue those people. One thing led to another and ultimately they created the White Helmets, one of the bravest organizations that I have ever had the pleasure to see working in a situation like this. How did the White Helmets respond to the earthquake? وكل ما الناس صارت توصل لأقرب منطقة موجودة فيها لحتى تلتحق بعمل. One woman told us that when her home began to shake and then began to collapse, she assumed that it was a Russian airstrike. You have to keep in mind that these are people who had already been suffering under a 12-year civil war. It was just another airstrike until the enormity of what had happened finally dawned on all of them. What do you remember of the moment that you were rescued by the White Helmets? When we first met the White Helmets, it was sort of a loosely organized group of volunteers. The only thing they seemed to have joining them was the color of their helmets. But now, after the earthquake, the White Helmets have a, a much bigger mission. Not only are they trying to recover bodies at this point in all this rubble, but they are taking on the task in northwest Syria of removing all of this rubble, pushing all of this debris out of the streets so that people can get around again, and finally try to help all of these people recover the remains of the loved ones that they've lost. What remains to be done by your teams? يعني هلا فعليا يعني المرحلة الأولى من الزلزال كانت استجابة ل ل ل انتشال الضحايا وإنقاذ المدنيين من تحت الأنقاض. المرحلة الثانية هي كانت عملية فتح الطرقات وإعادة الحياة للمناطق اللي تعرضت للزلزال. نحن هلا وبعدها رح نبدأ بعملية التعافي من الزلزال واللي هي عبر عبر إعادة ترميم أو إعادة تأهيل البنى التحتية من صرف صحي ومياه المدارس المستشفيات الدور العبادي والمناطق اللي هي بحاجة لساعد الناس لاستعادة حياتهم من أول وجديد. How long will all of that take? يعني بتوقع إنه عملية إعادة التعافي للمجتمعات كلها اللي تضررت من الزلزال رح تأكل معنا أكثر من سنة من العمل. We are now several weeks after the earthquake. What does the world need to know about the present state of this catastrophe? نحن بأول أسبوع من الزلزال تركنا بمفردنا كنا عم نحارب 
فقط هو المجتمع اللي دعمنا فقط هو السوريين ونحن كنا عم نحارب الزمن لحتى ننقذ الناس من تحت الانقاض بظل نقص المعدات ونقص الاليات اللي كنا عم نعاني منه بشكل كثير كبير ونحن اليوم ما زلنا عم نواجه نفس الصرو اللي فيني اقوله في اختصار الناس بشمال غرب سوريا هن عم بيعيشوا تحت حصار المجتمع الدولي وليس حصار احد اخر ما عم يعني عم بيكون في اخطاء بتطبيق الاستجابه الانسانيه للمدنيين بشمال غرب سوريا It's been 12 years that the civil war has been going on and and the earthquake served to return the world's attention back to this part of the Middle East. And so I think anyone looking at this situation hopes that there can be some kind of a settlement within the civil war that will allow these people a certain ability to have normal lives again after these compound tragedies.